Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we have a pretty cool step-by-step -step effect tutorial within After Effects. Some cool masking, looping animations, which we can do here. Here's some little examples for you guys. Now this effect was actually requested by one of you guys a while ago on Twitter. Here's the Twitter and the actual link to the original video is unavailable for some reason. So I'm pretty sure the original one that was linked was deleted. But if you guys want to look more into this and the director and editor behind it, um, it is shot and edited by Omar Jones. Here's another little example. Pretty cool. Pretty cool use of some offset. Now, reason why I wanted to make this a tutorial is because this isn't only a cool music video effect, but you can also use this for a lot of motion graphics um, purposes as well. So let's hop right into this. All relative links and credits will be down below. Like I said, Said, go check out Omar Jones's work and follow him on Instagram etc so what you guys can do is grab a clip in Premiere right click on it replace with After Effects or we can start right within After Effects and we're just going to start from scratch and before we start if you guys are new here consider subscribing if you do enjoy the content please leave a like it does help the growth of the channel a huge amount if you're looking for any preset effects for Premiere and After Effects check out my website link below you can find a bunch of helpful stuff some cheap and free resources which can help boost your game anyways enough of the talk let's get right into this so I I would say this effect is about an intermediate skill level so if you are having trouble following along I'm gonna link below some masking tutorials some other tutorials that may help with the basic steps involved with this so in the clip examples here you'll see that the effects that work really well with this is symmetrical square objects or something like a or something like a traffic sign would work really well with this something that's easy to track not a lot of movement you can have movement and we are going to be doing some simple tracking here if you would like to do with movement if you do it with a tripod it's going to be a lot easier but if you are going to have some motion having just slight handheld looks like this is going to work best if it's too shaky you're not going to be able to pull this off so i'm going to go up to my toolbar select the pen tool or click g on your keyboard and then make a mask around this square and it'll automatically put the mask on add so to bring up your mask options press m on your keyboard with this layer selected here you can go ahead and put that on subtract so this way the mask is cutting out everything which is in the square that we placed you guys can also bump up your mask feather a tiny bit maybe something between 0 and 10 pixels so i'll place it at 10 uh, I'll maybe even do it at six so that it doesn't have that kind of soft edge. So now for now, we're actually going to take it off subtract. We're going to place it on none. And the reason why we're going to do this is because if you scroll along here, you'll see the mask is just kind of sticking in that original location. We're going to want to track mask that so that it's following along with the motion of our video. So right click on our mask here where it says mask one and go to track mask and then it'll pop up your tracker window. I might be blocking it a little bit. Just go ahead and keep that on position scale rotation and click play. And if you do have not too much motion, if you are tracking something that's easy, like a geometric, like a square, a diamond, something that's easy for the track to pick up, then this should be a very simple track. And if there is things that are messing up, you can pause it, delete any of the keyframes you don't want go in and maybe adjust like this and then you can cre press play again just like that to resume the track okay so we have our mask track now we're going to want to do two things first thing we're going to want to do is select this layer and click Control d to duplicate that and then we're going to select our bottom original layer i'll just rename this to our base plate because this is our original footage i'm going to make the mask on our base plate I'm going to change it from none to subtract as soon as this After Effects autosave goes away. So change that to subtract. And if we hide our top layer, you'll see that this is subtracted like I showed you before. And that with the mask tracking looks pretty good. Now what we're going to do with this top layer here, we're going to make a little composition of just this picture. And to do this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to click M and we're going to place this mask on add. So this layer by itself is just the picture. Play that out for you like that. If we bring the background back, just like normal. So we've isolated just the picture in a layer, and we've isolated just the background with the picture cut out. Now with just the picture layer, what you're going to want to do here is actually right click and just go to time and then go to freeze frame. So what we're going to want to do here is let's look at our normal top layer. You can actually select your mask, open it up and just delete all these keyframes. We just want to have the actual picture selected and then we can right click on this and go to time and then go to freeze frame. So if I drag along, you'll see it's just a picture frozen just like that. Now what we can do is we can actually take that picture, control D to duplicate that. And we're going to make a long line across where we're going to be doing this looping animation. So something like this, keep control D to duplicate and then just open up the transforms and just make this along a line. So if I go back to my older comp with this completely finished, this is what it should look like. 
you'll see I just have a horizontal line going across the screen. Let's hop back in here and finish that up. And if you were going to have an up to down loop, like how I do in this little plaque animation, we're gonna create an up and down little freeze frame comp. So transform, grab the position, and make sure that's moving along the edge. So now we have a horizontal line going all the way across the screen. So what we can do is we can select all of these um, duplications that we just made. We can right click and then we can just pre-compose that into its own layer. And then with this pre-comp, we can go ahead and name this um, picture loop, just so we have it all organized, move all attributes and the new comp is checked, click OK. So now we have this long picture loop and we have our base plate. Take your picture loop and place it in a layer below our base plate so that it's only showing up where this masked where this masked area is just like that. And if you want, if there's some black areas showing once you finish the animation um, later down the road, you can just take these, duplicate them, move them down just to cover up that black space. We'll talk more into that later when we're tweaking the actual look. But anyways, come back into your composition. Let's bring back our top layer. So we have this almost ready for our little scrolling effect. But if we play this, you'll see that this isn't fully tracked to where we want it. So what we need to do here is take your base plate, control D to duplicate that. And we're going to rename this to base plate for tracking. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to right click down in this gray space, or you can go to layer new, and then we're going to go to null object. And we're going to right click on that null object and rename that to tracking info. And if you've seen any of my tracking videos before, like I said, if you're a beginner, check out my full ultimate guide to After Effects tracking. This little null object just serves as a placeholder for the tracking information for the tracking information that we're about to get. So grab your base plate for tracking. You can click M, delete the mask off of there. And then we're going to right click on that base plate for tracking. We're going to go to track and stabilize and we're going to track our motion on that. So don't do a 3D tracker. I found that the 3D tracker just doesn't work as well as a good old motion track. And then you're gonna to wanna to find something that is pretty easy to track upon within this scene that's in our general area. So I'm gonna place it like here, and then I'm going to try and make these edges match up like this. Now with our tracker, I'll move that up so you guys can see it better. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click edit target and this tracker should pop up as soon as you click motion track. If it doesn't just go to window and just make sure that the tracker is checked. So click edit target, make our layer say tracking info or null. If it's on anything else, change that to your tracking info and click okay. We can have position. You don't have to worry about rotation and scale unless it's more complicated track. If it is a more complicated track, I recommend a different kind of tracker like Mocha, but this should work fine for what we're doing. Go ahead and click play so that our tracker can do its thing. And it's doing a really great job so far. You'll see that it's pretty solid tracked onto there. And having these square edges is really easy to track onto. So we'll let that finish and do its thing. Great, so that's finished. If there's any mess ups here, you can manually change these around. Um, in my ultimate guide to tracking, I talk about that. So check that out if you're still confused, if you're still having issues. Once this is all ready and looking good, you can click apply right here. And then it's gonna pop up, it's gonna say X and Y, that's fine. So click OK and that applied that track onto our tracking info null right here so if you select your null you'll see that it's fine it has all of this tracking information selected as keyframes for us to use so now what we can do is we can actually hide this base plate tracking layer and then we can select our picture loop and we can actually parent it to our tracking info so you can just grab this pick whip drag it on there to parent or just select it in the drop down and now our picture loop should be tracked perfectly onto there. Now, if you're still seeing some black edges, there's a few things you can do. One thing you can do is drag a little bit forward and then maybe open up your transform and just kind of make it a tiny bit bigger, like scale it up so that it fits like that. So that there's no edges showing throughout or what you can do is you can actually come into the comp itself and you can just duplicate all these layers, drag them up, make sure that you retract that in here scale that up so that it fits. And that is actually looking pretty good in terms of our track. Um, I know in my original composition, I only had one little line going along here and it still worked fine. But anyways, let's hop back into that comp. 
and now we can add the looping effect which actually brings us all together so this is pretty easy just hop over to your effects and presets and we're going to search for an offset effect this is used a lot by motion graphics people to create some sort of 2d little animation and they want to create a background you can use this offset effect to create a nice looping background now what we can do is we can actually just keyframe our um, offset so let's click open effects open up offset and then make a keyframe for our shift center We'll move a little bit forward and creep that a bit to your right or whatever direction you want to go. This is just to kind of make it look like you have some motion. Drag a bit more, crank that all the way, and then drag to the end, and then turn it until it looks like the picture is reset like that. So let's play that out. And for some reason, if you're doing an offset at the beginning, it might kind of back up a bit. So you have to be careful with these first, you have to be careful with these keyframes. So this is where you really have to experiment to get the look of the animation that you really want. An easy little tip to make this a little bit more smooth and just to add some more realistic touches is you can actually select these keyframes, right click on them and go to keyframe assistant and you can make them ease in. I don't actually like how that looks for this. I think it's a little bit too much of a rough cut. So I'll keep that normal like how I did before. Now, another big thing which adds a lot to the look in this is a motion blur. Now, in terms of motion blur, an easy way to add this to make it really look realistic is by clicking toggle switches and modes until you can see these little square blocks here. And if you hover over these three circles, you'll see this is motion blur and it'll simulate shutter duration. So this is used to really match actual shutter blur with real cameras. So you can check that on for this picture loop layer this pre-comp that we have and then to get it to work you also have to activate it here in these top little controls so make sure you enable the motion blur and then if you press play you'll see there's a lot more natural blurring going on there which adds a lot to the look now if you want to change this around in any way you can actually go up to composition composition settings click advanced and this is the shutter angle which is going to be used for this composition you can make this lower or higher so I'll put it on 590 and you'll see there's just a lot more blurring, a little bit too much. So let's actually go back to our composition settings, advanced and 300 is fine for what I've been using. It should be defaulted at 180. Now, if that's not enough blur for you, depending on the shot, depending on the keyframes, you can go over to your effects and presets and drop a little directional blur onto here, drop that onto your picture loop. And then we'll start the keyframe so that it starts right before it's about to jet off. And direction, it should be going 90 degrees and then if you were going up and down obviously you would put it on 180 but keyframe your blur length at zero at this position and then once it gets to our max velocity about here you're going to want to just bump that blur up it'll really depend on the clip and then once you get back to your starting position bump that back down to zero so here's what that looks like a lot more blur and i think in this case the normal after effects motion blur works pretty fine so i hope you guys enjoyed that to a beginner it might seem pretty complicated but it's really not that knowledge of masking tracking and then using some simple effects to pull it all together like i said if you want to customize this with any kind of preset effects or plugins feel free you can create some cool looks um, in this little comp here i think i just dropped a little flicker and a glow animation so we'll play that out for you just to make that pop more. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're looking for effects and presets, check out my website link down below. We have glows, we have trippy stuff, we have glitch stuff, we have a bunch of awesome things which will help boost up your projects. Now just to talk about this, I used the same exact steps I did in what I just showed you. So if you are creating a horizontal loop like that, rewind the video. As you can see here, I added a directional blur here with 180 degrees. And then for this one, the edges were a little bit more tricky. As you can see, there's some little chops here now ways to fix this I'll double in here is what I did was I added a solid behind everything with the same color as the plaque just to kind of fill in any black space that would normally be here so that helped a lot to really blend those together but keep in mind everything you do here will be reflected in the actual comp so if you're trying to mix the picture quality you just have to be careful with that Play around with it you can get some really cool stuff like i said for music videos motion graphics things any kind of work you are commercial work anything you are doing this is just a good effect to know in general and it's a great way to brush up on your masking your tracking those kind of things hope you guys did enjoy leave a like comment subscribe all relevant links will be down in the description thank you guys as always for supporting Comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.